Hi, my name is Zach Kerstetter with KMG Academy in Boulder, Colorado. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about generating bass rhythms. So one of the things people often forget about when they're writing their bass lines is the bass is a rhythm instrument. And so having really quantized, really on the grid bass lines is not always really what you want. You want it to, to groove a little bit. You want it to feel alive. You want it to have that funk in there. So I'm gonna show you a technique for adding a little bit more uh, groove to your bass lines that I find is pretty quick and pretty painless. And it's a great way to just get lots of different ideas out of your bass lines. So to start off, we're going to start with a percussion loop like this. Nothing too fancy, just a little percussion loop. And what I'm looking for is something that has like a nice bit of rhythm and usually a bit of space in between the transients. So I've got a little space in between each one of these sounds. Otherwise our bass line is gonna sound really cluttered and a little too rushed. So there's a couple ways we could start extracting timing information for this. The first way could be to convert drums into new MIDI track, which will create a new MIDI track with a bunch of MIDI notes in here. And we could use this to extract and get rid of some of this uh, MIDI information and use that to create a rhythm and that could totally work. Another option that we have is we're going to slice to new MIDI track, same idea here, it's going to analyze this clip and it's going to create a new MIDI clip for us with again, a bunch of MIDI notes indicating the timing of each one of our transients. Um, also could pretty, be, work out pretty well. However, I'm gonna show you my favorite method for doing this, doing this, which is going to be extracting a groove out of a clip. So if we right click on this, we can hit extract groove. And once again, it's going to analyze the sample looking for uh, transients for timing information. And it's going to create a groove file, a .agr file, which stands for Ableton Groove, and it's gonna put it inside your groove pool. We talked about groove pool in another video. I definitely recommend go checking that out if the groove pool is a new concept to you. Uh, but we're gonna take this and we're gonna drag it onto a MIDI track. So one of the nice things about these .agr files, these groove files, is that when you put them on a MIDI track, Live treats them as a MIDI clip. So here we can see, here's all of my tying information all on one MIDI note, which is awesome. So uh, this is on a MIDI track that just has an operator playing this nice kind of like plucky bass line or bass sound. So we're gonna take that and if I hit play right now, it's gonna sound a little choppy. So we have the rhythm there, but it doesn't really, like we're not actually hearing that bass sound because the notes are too short. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna hit the legato button. The legato button is going to take the end of each MIDI note and extend it out to the beginning of the next note. So if I hit that, now each note extends out. So each note is a bit longer and we can actually hear it that pluck. Uh, and then what we can do is we can decide what notes we wanna play. So say uh, I wanna write something in the key of F minor. Let's go down here and we could set this to be an F note. Like that. And then maybe every bar, every half bar, or however I want, I might wanna change notes. So maybe I wanna go up here to this uh, A sharp note. So we take that and we can start using whatever notes we're using in our bass line, but taking the rhythm of this percussive loop, which means if I layer the two of them together, they're going to uh, coincide with one another. Which can, which can be kind of cool. In some situations, you might not want your percussion and your bass to happen simultaneously. Uh, so one of the nice things about using this method is I don't actually need to use my percussion loop. I can leave that out and then I'm just off the bass line and we can hear what that sounds like in context with the kick drum. Some shakers. So it makes it super easy. If I wanna make it a little more complicated than that, I could hit the duplicate loop button and that way I get a four bar loop. And then maybe I will take this note here and move it down to that G sharp. And then we have a four bar bass line. makes it super easy. And if you want to, of course, you can always edit this. If there's a little bit too many notes here, maybe I'll take uh, this note right here on this fourth quarter note, make it a little bit longer. Uh, maybe I will pitch things up and down at different points, uh, move things around and customize it from there. So it's a great way just to get some ideas for rhythm and then start customizing it based off of your song. So let's try one more quick example of this with a different percussive loop. So we'll take this guy here. So it's got a lot of stuff going on in it. We're going to right click, we're going to extract the groove. It's going to analyze the sample. Uh, it's also gonna analyze the uh, volume for 
uh, velocity information, which can be particularly useful. So you get a little velocity with your clip as well. So we'll take this, move it over here. Once again, we'll hit the legato button and we'll take a listen to it. Uh, which sounds pretty cool. And then we can go ahead and pitch this down or pitch it up wherever direction we wanna go with it. And maybe start moving these notes around to play different notes that are in the key that I'm in. Let's make this guy say over here. And we can hear it in context with some other sounds. Super easy. It's a lot of fun just to you know, find some percussion that you like and you don't actually need to use those percussive loops in uh, your actual song. You can just extract the groove and then uh, apply it to your, your bass line and then just start playing around with it and go from there and then delete the percussion if you want. This is also not limited just to bass lines. I just find particularly for me recently, this has been a fun method for generating bass lines. You could do this with melodies. You could do this with all kinds of stuff but we're just essentially taking the timing of this information. And if you can find uh, percussive loops, percussive loops that are not super quantized, uh, you get this nice human natural feel to your bass line that can be hard to do unless you're actually are pretty good at playing your MIDI controller or playing your instrument. Uh, and that way you don't get these overly quantized, really stiff bass lines in your music, which can make a huge, huge difference if you're trying to make dance music and actually people make people move and feel the groove of the song you're trying to make. So try it out. Hopefully that was useful for you. Uh, and keep an eye out for videos from KMG coming real soon.